I'm in a potato field in uh, Washington State. It's in the lower Columbia Basin, uh, probably about six, seven miles uh, north of Pasco, Washington. This particular field is um, ranger russets. Uh, this grower has probably 3,000 acres of ranger russets. Uh, what we want to talk about today is the application and use of calcium uh, on potatoes and specifically look at the correct timing. Calcium is important in potato production. When you, when you make calcium applications and things that we've done with our calves, the calcium thiosulfate, you won't often see large um, yield responses um, at harvest time, maybe a ton and a half, maybe two tons to the acre. Uh, but where you see your yield responses is when you pull the potatoes out of storage because calcium is the storage nutrient. You put as much calcium into that tuber as you can, you're going to strengthen the cell walls, you're going to reduce shatter bruise, you're going to help prevent a bacterial soft rot, and definitely reduce shrink when you pull those potatoes out of storage for processing. So that's why you want calcium. But unlike a lot of the other nutrients that you're gonna put on potatoes, calcium has a specific time it needs to get on in order to maximize calcium concentration in that tuber. And that's what we wanna look at today. In these ranger russets, uh, right now is about the time uh, in this particular area, get into late May, when we're going to start to form tuber roots and stolen roots. And it's during that formation time that you want to flood that, that, uh, that zone that those roots are in with soluble calcium. In order to get calcium into a potato plant, you have to not only put it on at the right time, but your calcium has to be 100% water soluble, which CATS is. One of the other advantages of, of CATS is that you have a thiosulfate attachment to it. If you've got free lime in the soil and you make your CATS application, you not only flood that zone uh, where the root, tuber roots are and the stolen roots with soluble calcium, but you have the oxidation of the thiosulfate uh, will we'll solubilize calcium in that free lime and give you additional calcium. So for instance, uh, a 10 gallon CATS application will give you six pounds of soluble calcium but the oxidation of that calcium will give you, uh, of that thiosulfate will, on the, on the uh, calcium carbonate will give you an additional six or seven pounds of calcium. And this process takes place in about two weeks. So for every 10 gallons you're putting on, you're initially putting, uh, essentially putting on 12 to 13 pounds of soluble calcium. Now, that's really important that this oxidation process takes place quickly because those tuber roots will only last two, maybe three weeks, and the stolen roots maybe will last a little bit longer. So the key is to put as much calcium on in that short window of time uh, that, that, um, that those tuber roots and stolen roots are open and available. We're going to uh, dig a hill and I will show you uh, uh, if, if, if this field is about ready for cats. And then we'll take you to a center pivot location also to show you how we inject the cats uh, into the center pivot. Because in this particular area, uh, we're going to put on 35 gallons of cats to the acre in one revolution. So as soon as those tuber roots are showing and the stolen roots are showing, we're gonna put 35 gallons of cats on in one revolution. So in, in 24 to 30 hours, we're gonna have that application on. And it's important to do that in one application because he's gonna have to go over this field once or twice more to rinse that cats down into that root zone where it can be taken up with the stolen roots and the tuber roots. And keep in mind, again, it's very short lived. So we want to get on as much calcium as we can get on in that two or three week period of time. Calcium only 
gets into the plant through the water conducting tissue, through the root tissue. You could foliar your feed calcium till you're blue in the face on potatoes, and you might raise your calcium levels, but that calcium will never get down into the tubers because calcium won't, um, um, won't be transported in the phloem tissue, only through the xylem or the water conducting tissue. So let's dig a hill and uh, let's see where we're at in our, um, uh, in, our, in our timing rate to put cats on potatoes. All right, we've dug a hill and, um, and you can see on those tubers, the one I'm pointing at here, it is, there's the, some tuber hair roots right there. And on the, um, on the stolen hair, you can see the stolen roots forming. So that's really what you want to look at when you're determining your, your calcium application timing. That's when you can maximize calcium uptake when your tuber roots are starting to form. And, and you have those stolen roots forming. So you can see a tuber root right there, and then the stolen roots that are forming. There's another one right there, tuber roots, and the stolen roots starting to form. So that's how you maximize uh, calcium uptake into that tuber. So you need soluble calcium, and you need to flood that calcium into that zone at this timing. Here's another one that's been uh, detached a little bit a bigger tuber. You can again see the tuber roots right here and then the stolen roots right there. And that's, that's how we maximize that calcium uptake. So it's all about timing, putting as much soluble calcium as we can get on in about a three week period of time. That's about how long these tuber roots last. And this is about the size of the tubers. These are um, ranger russets. Some potato varieties really don't show the tuber roots very well. So one other way you can do it is see if we have a stolen root showing, like right there, or uh, you're about this size, which is maybe a, um, a hen's egg or something smaller size.